Hey everyone, Dr. Jean DeVroy is a Belgium-based hair transplant surgeon who is awesome. He's a leader in the field and he came up with the WA system for FUE hair transplants, one of the most popular and most commonly used systems today on the market. And this was back in 2016, five years ago. What makes it unique is that it has an oscillating feature, so it moves back and forth, almost like when you're getting your cast removed after you know, a bone fracture, and once it gets to the skin, it doesn't injure it because of the type of movement. So the same concept here, it's a handheld type of system, and it has a hybrid tornado punch, which again limits the damage on the follicles while also giving you a nice healthy follicle when it's extracted. So I recently got to chat with Dr. DeVroy about his new upcoming system, and he talked about what makes it unique, what are the new features of his new system, and when it'll be out on the market. So I hope you guys enjoy the interview. See ya. When I have a hair case, I'm not doing, you know, five hair cases and just one case, you know, focused on it with the text. I think that's the proper way to, to build and, and offer quality. Yes. And I love your machine. You know, this is the backstory on, on the WA for me. Um, so, you know, Jeff was using it exclusively in his practice. I think more recently they at least bought the Trevolini, but I don't think they use it very much um, as far as I know. I kind of trained with it, but I always found it difficult when I was with them to use because they had it on very high speed and the oscillation was, was very high. And, and it was just hard for me when I was learning to do FUE to just control the machine. It just felt like it was just vibrating all over the place. And no one showed me that you can dial it down, that you can control the settings. I had no idea. I mean, they just never really formally mm -hmm. kind of introduced me. It was just like, oh, here, here you go. And I was like, how do I control this thing? I just can't, you know. So I always asked for the, uh, just like the sharp punch, you know, Ellis that they had, because I'm like, I know it's not as good, but at least it's not crazy moving around in my hand. I can't like learn like this. So then when I, started my practice i bought the trevolini thinking oh this is going to be something that you know is going to be great it doesn't vibrate as much blah 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 the whole suction system and just the way that it felt and the way that the graphs lifted was just it was okay but i'm like i feel like this could be better and then actually some of my um, hair technicians who were in practices like uh, unger's practice i had one who came over from her practice he kept saying like no no you should get the wah like it's it's better better graphs but so I'm like, you know what, fine. So when I had enough money, I bought the WAP myself. Uh, and then I was like, this is amazing. Like you can, so I, I kind of dialed down everything so I could like use it properly in my hand. And I love it. And that's exclusively what we use now. Thank you. Um, it's amazing. I mean, it's just so simple yet effective. You know, the scars are great. It's just like, it's awesome. So, so thank you for inventing it. <laughs> but you know, the story of that is that in the beginning, I didn't invent it for 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 sale I, I i made it for me because uh, i was not satisfied by by the different uh, machine that i saw right. um, and, uh, and i began first by the by the punch mm -hmm. uh, when i began uh, FUE, it was it was almost 15 years ago mm -hmm. a little a little bit after the main one you know you, we had uh, jim harris uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Jones, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, Dr. Cole, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, who, who began, uh, Dr. Rose, uh, Dr. Razman, they, they began all, all together. But uh, when I tried, I had the chance to have you know, Dr. Mwamba. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a fellow from uh, Dr. Cole coming back in Belgium, mm -hmm. and he, he, he didn't have any, any, any place to begin. So he began in my office, and so it began with the FUT. I was I was doing the FUT, so I, I, I did with him. For me, the traditional technique, uh, manual technique with sharp punch was just just bad. <laughs> I was, and, and, and my decision after probably after one year was to say, okay, it's not for me. I will not continue with the FUE. Yeah. Uh, FUE is a bad idea. I remember I was telling everybody that. FUE was a bad technique that mm. should not exist, you know. But right. after that, what I what I did, I I kept all the punch that I had from the Pocor with the idea mm. one day I could try to modify. Probably there is something to do. Mm -hmm. And the idea came from the observation, and this is why it's always good to observe. Yes. 
other people to go, even if you feel you know, mm -hmm. go and not just look, but really watch, make mm -hmm. real observation. I remember it was in, uh, in Turkey and it was Dr. Harris. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Harris had this new punch. And in fact, he, he invents a system of flat punch, of his punch, even he said it, it was a blunt, was, was flat, but mm -hmm. flat with, with something like that. The, the mm -hmm. external part was like this. It's, it's not logical because you increase the angulation. And, and I understood immediately that, that by doing that, the cutting edge was that, that part, yeah, mm -hmm. the external mm -hmm. part. But it was not logical to have this. So I, I went back to, to my house. The Monday after uh, the, the meeting, mm -hmm. I... I took a, a punch from Dr. Cole and I shop, just shop the extremity uh -huh. to, have, to have just a tube, yeah. but a perfect tube, something that was perfectly flat. Uh -huh. And I was surprised to see that it was working. It works. It works not very well, but it works, I would say, better than the sharp. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And now we have, for example, Dr. Kapil Dua did that and... But, but the, the first invention was, it was not an invention. The first thing was that. Mm -hmm. And after that, I'm, I felt that by doing that, I was creating also a, a double angulation, external and, and mm -hmm. internal. So what I tried to do is to reduce and to make like a funnel inside. Mm -hmm. But by doing this funnel inside, I was... I was in, in fact coming back almost to a sharp punch because uh -huh. it's so thin, the wall is one millimeter. Right. So it's so thin that if you try to reduce the weights here inside, you will create a new sharp thing. And the idea came one day, I said, the only solution is to make, to make a, a deportation and to, to make like a, like a, a trumpet. Uh -huh. um, and for the last years of the last three or four years, I finished by a system that is a T. The name is Tornado Punch. It's really a T. Mm -hmm. It's like this, 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 this. And the, and the T's mm -hmm. are around the branch of the T. The external so you have part. You have the T here and mm -hmm. the, the, the T's are there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's possible to play with the, with the, the width of this branch. Mm -hmm. We have, we still have a perfect flat part because this is, I really believe, the trick. The flat is really something that is protecting. I still have transaction. This is this is horrible because theoretically, with that system, mm -hmm. I should not have any transaction. I still have transaction. But that's just no because way. of the angulation, right? I mean, because of the changes in the angulation of all the hairs and. Sometimes it changes, and if, yeah, you, but if, you, make, if you make a drawing, normally you should you, you should not have any contact between the teeth and the hair. So mm -hmm. I still not understand perfectly why we still have transaction. So the outer uh, part, just to make sure I understand, and just for people viewing it, the outer part is the part with teeth that's sharp, right? And then the inner part yeah. that actually contacts the follicle. It, and and the, the bulb is, is dull. Is that pretty accurate? Yes, I'm, I'm doing a little uh, drawing here. Mm -hmm. So you will, you will understand what, what happened. So, uh, okay, you have, coming through. Mm -hmm. You have this T, the ah. external part here mm -hmm. is cutting. Mm -hmm. And it's because we push, you, you can make the experience. Kind of it out. If you make the experience of just placing the punch like that, the flat punch on your blows and turning with no pressure, it will not cut. If you do the same with a sharp punch, you will cut immediately because right. the, 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 the cutting edge is still there. With right. that, the cutting edge is external. It's, it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's here. Yes, yes, uh, yes. It's here. Out there, because yeah. Makes here sense. you have, you have little, little teeth. If you take a look, if you take a look of, of, from the, the face, uh -huh. you have like it's like a, it's like a sun. So it's really it's protective like, for the follicles. It's like a sun like this, you know. 
You have yeah, the, yeah, the, they, yeah. the middle, you have the flat part, and you have the teeth. And then, Dr. DeVoy, when you measure, when you say, like, okay, a 0.9 punch, 0.95, which, which area are you measuring? The external? Oh, yes. It's obviously external, and it should be a rule. Be careful when... Not every punch is measured that way. So. I know. I know. You have some company. Uh, <laughs> there is one company from Turkey, and, and I, years ago, I told them... Uh, uh, because I, they were sympathetic and I was like a friend. I said, you are, you are wrong, you know, you are, you are telling that this dimension is the dimension of the punch, but this is the internal dimension. You, you cannot do that. You need to speak about the external dimension. They say, oh, yeah, yeah. we are sorry, we will modify. They never modify because, because it's better to say that you say that, that you use a 0.9 in, if in fact you use a 1.1 and, and, and it's misleading I, it's misleading i think the robot one does that too if i'm not mistaken i know i met people who are so proud that they use very small punch and in fact when when we take a look it's okay. uh it's zero two millimeter more than than uh, what they they sold yeah. So yes, it's always it's always the, the, the external uh, diameter, and it, it was the main invention. After that, I came with with the system, the wow system, mm -hmm. and uh, the idea was really simple. It was to, to reproduce the, the movement that we have with with the finger. The thing is that I always and only use what we call an oscillation. Yeah. Oscillation is the movement that is going this this way. And even now, I try to reduce as much as possible the oscillation. If you reduce so, so much the oscillation, you can have like a shaking. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the shaking, the real shaking is that if you make a real shaking, in fact, it doesn't cut or it cuts very, very uh, few. When you have yeah. a cast, for example. Yeah, right. When you cut a cast, when you cut a cast with, with a little saw, Mm -hmm. It's a saw that has a vibration. It will cut the, the cast, but when you arrive to the skin, it doesn't cut at all. Exactly. Because when you have this structure and when you have a vibration, it's funny, but it's like that. So mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm studying a lot all this stuff because I'm, I'm uh, building, it's almost ready, mm -hmm. a new device, wireless. And for that new device, I had to change everything. I had to change the motor. I had to change the whole part. Right. And um, and I and I wanted to find also to have a very good application mm -hmm. with the, the possibility for everybody to find the good uh, the, the best way for each each people. And uh, I discovered that 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 finally, when really you are going to Mm -hmm. to uh, a very, very small movement, it doesn't cut at all. Yeah, I, I try right. the Trivellini and the Mwamba, you can make the experience. When, we, when, you, uh, when you make the Mwamba at the end, you don't cut. I don't know what you do. I, I believe you don't do anything. I, I wanted to, to, so to make something like that, but finally I, I suppress for my system because when I make, and it was an idea I had for a very long time, mm -hmm. I wanted to have this vibration because I thought it should be good, but also I had in my mind, mm -hmm. yeah, but Paris, it, it should not work because I knew this story with the cast. And finally, I was right. When, when I tried to, to use it, uh -huh. I realized it doesn't, just, it, it doesn't work. I made many experiments and I still do that. I, I have the chance of still doing FUT. Mm -hmm. And when I, have an, when I do an FUT, I have a strip. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice to, to, to try on the side of a strip to try uh, to make extraction. Right. And this is a wonderful way to, to, re, to see what you do, to see what is the movement. And what I discovered was uh -huh. really a big surprise for me is uh -huh. that in, in reality, when you, when, you, when you go inside, right. the hair are stable and you really cut around. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, and especially with my system, because with my system, by definition, mm -hmm. The, the internal diameter is a little bit smaller than for the same punch sharp. Mm -hmm. If you have a sharp, because it's it's straight, mm -hmm. the internal diameter will be, for example, for 0 0.9, it will be 0 0.7. For mm -hmm. my, with mine, from 0 0.9, it will go to 0 0.6. 
And so when when I go deep enough, mm-hmm. when when the, the hair are stuck a little bit inside, yeah. in reality, what we do is we are making a torsion of the mm-hmm. of the fur. Mm-hmm. It, it's really stuck inside. So if you I do a, if you do a, a rotation like that, if you do a torsion, you have a big danger of having a torsion of the of the of the wall follicle and to have the follicle going inside just because the torsion is is uh, is pulling yes. you know, if you if you make any torsion like that mm-hmm. if you make a torsion you, you reduce the length and you, yeah. you pull the graft inside so this is why i believe i believe now I, i'm in in reality in my practice i'm going to have almost always the same movement mm-hmm. i don't have a lot of variation i'm always doing an, a, a, an oscillation yeah. I'm doing now, I place on my new device the possibility of having a little rotation. Ah. It was it was made, I believe it was first Dr. Cole and after Trivellini who made it and many people like it. I'm not completely sure it's changed a lot, but I I do it the now. Option not, but I use it now. A little rotation. The fact is that when you do a rotation, it cuts better. So you can mm-hmm. cut the first millimeter. And after you need to have uh, an oscillation. If you don't have an oscillation, you will have injury, you will, yeah. uh, injury much more the, the, the graph. Also, what I did, and I, I'm pretty sure my first, my next uh, punch will be like that. Mm-hmm. I made a big window in the half part of the punch, so the punch is almost completely open. Oh, so uh, you can do the long hair that way? It's not for long hair, because for long hair, you should need to have a slit. That is right, really oh, like, so this doesn't have a slit. It's, it's really like, like that. It's really like a window. And and the, the interest of this window is to decrease, again, it's to decrease the pressure uh-huh. between, between the hair that is going inside. I'm testing a lot of things for years. I tr- yeah. tried to improve, improve, improve. Many, many times the, the, the results are very excellent. I'm happy when I'm under 5% of transaction. Right. Uh, it's very really often around yes, 2, 3, 4%, 5%. Rarely it can go from 5 to 10, and I'm not very happy with that. Mm-hmm. But still, depending on the scalp, right? The scalp and, and the actual hair quality. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm talking about the rate of transaction. Sure. What I always, what I systematically do is that I'm, I'm making a quality control forever. So we are, in reality, we are counting. We have a little system with an Excel. Mm-hmm. And we are counting every day all the transaction we are doing on, on any any graph. So yeah. I have statistics for <laughs> million graphs. For many, many I, devices. I, I try, I try to find and to understand the different factors that that have a, an influence on that. But it seems easy, but it's so complicated to understand. It's so complicated. Yeah. It's so it's so dependent of the patient quality of his skin it's also depending of the of the surgeon and sometimes it's like uh, um, it's like crazy you know I, I do the, the half part almost perfect and I continue and uh, my rate of transaction is increasing by by two or three percent or four percent I don't know why I don't understand yeah I mean happens. I think I, I think one of the big reasons at least that I've noticed in the practice is just the, the changes of the, the angulation of the hairs and, and the direction, of course, too, because a lot of times it looks like it's kind of the same. And yet when you take a closer look, like even like a 5%, you know, angulation change, if you don't make the adjustment with your hand to accommodate that, you start to develop some transections until you maybe move the head a little bit, get a better angle. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it's down to, to, to zero or one or 2% again. So I don't know. That's kind of what I've been noticing. It's just like these little changes in depending on where you are exactly on the scalp. 
And without making those little fine, especially like just changing the angulation of your hand to the to the scalp surface. If you don't make those changes, I, I find that the transection rates can can uh, vary quite a bit. Yes, many 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 factors are yeah. playing a role. I, I believe many many of them. I had a question, Doctor Roy, about the size of the punch. What is your preferred punch size? Obviously, it's going to change from person to person, but like sort of all comers all different kind of colors of skin and, and, and hair and, and shapes and all of that. What I trained with was a 0.85. And in my practice, uh, when we really take a close look under the microscope at each graph that's coming out, um, honestly, these days, I'm not going below a 0.9 because the health of the graph, it just looks different. It looks healthier with that slightly larger size. And we find that the holes are still, the scars are ultimately tiny anyway. And a lot of times now we're actually going to 0.95. And the reason for that, at least in my practice, is we're capturing more of those larger graphs, the threes and the fours. Whereas in the past, it was like a partial transection many times with the 0.85. That's been my experience. It's very different from how I train, but I think it's been an important change to really try to preserve those larger follicles that can be very valuable on the scalp. So that, that so I wanted to hear kind of what, what you end up using usually. I would agree 100% with you. So same. Uh, for years I used 09, nevertheless. And now, and, and it was because also with my new device, I, I didn't have 09. The, the manufacturer for the Mm -hmm. For the essay I made, gave me 0 0.95 and 1. And I saw, I saw, like you said, the difference uh, in terms of transaction, but not only, this is something really important that we have to notice. Everybody should, should, should calculate that. In reality, the rate of transaction doesn't mean, yeah, it means something, but the main number is not the rate of transaction itself. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between you can make a, a, calcu a simple calculation at the end of the surgery. How many hair per graph did you get? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you calculate the number of, of, uh, of hair mm -hmm. that you, you finally get, and it's easy. You, you, you know how many, gra how many graph with one, two, three, or, and four hair. Mm -hmm. You don't have to count the one that you divide by yourself to have more, more single yeah. graph, but sure. before, before cutting it. So, you know, you try to do your best because this is also, like you said, I try to have, personally, I try to have the best graph. I prefer to have less graft with more hair yeah. than more graft with less hair. Right. Right. And, and the reason is because I know perfectly that graft with, with a few hair, like one hair graft, is not growing the same, the same way as the biggest one. Yeah. When, we, when we make a hairline, if we have... 70% of growing, 80%, we should be very happy. Mm -hmm. And as a place with the big one, so with the four hair graphs, it will be 90 or 95. So it's almost by definition, when you reduce the number of hair per graph, you reduce the growing. Yeah. So if you do want to have the same number of hair, and yeah. if you take more little graph, by using, for example, some people do that, they use very, very little, small uh, punch, and they have essentially one or two hair graphs. At the, at the end, they will have the same number of hair, globally mm -hmm. the same number of hair with more graft. And the goal is, is also that, is having more graft and uh, ask the patient to pay more graft. But finally, the, the patient will have the same number of, of hair. Mm -hmm. and this is this, this number that is uh, the most important. And this is why I prefer essentially to have more hair per graph, not, not too much, but, but the best graph, the three and the four hair graph yeah. should be that grow. And so what you have to do at the end of the surgery, you can calculate the number of hair per graph that you get. Yeah. And you can make, if you, if you made an observation during the surgery, and mm -hmm. if, you, if you, each time you, you, you count the number of transaction, you can do the same but it's the, the number of hair that you should have had with no transaction. You imagine I'm not doing any transaction. How many hair do I have? I divide this, this number by the number of graphs and you compare these two numbers. For example, you try to get 
52 uh, hair per graft, mm -hmm. and you finally finally get I would say you get 2.3. So mm -hmm. you 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 suppress 0 to uh, hair per graft, so you lost something like 10 percent. This is the rate of transaction. That number is the rate of transaction. It's really easy, but right. not just looking this rate of transaction, but knowing what do you get and what did you try to, to, to get. You saw immediately that when you increase hmm. the diameter of the punch, automatically you will increase the number of hypergraphs that you get, that right. you try to get automatically. Yes. And probably because when you when you look, you, you can see that the diameter of the of the punches allow you to, to try to get this one, which is a big one with three. Mm -hmm. If you have a zero nine and you, you come with the, the zero nine there, oh, you can see that it's too it's too small. This one is too big. So you will take another one just just near with two hair. And yeah. you will automatically decrease yes. uh, the, the number of hair per graph that you try to, to get. So I advise all doctors to do that. Even if now we are not doing uh, uh, this calculation, this quality control for all the graph. I did for years, but now we don't have the possibility because I, I have less people with sure. me. But we are still doing it at least three or four times during the surgery, and we are doing it in the beginning of the surgery right. to know if I have to change or not. And sometimes I do it like that. I tr I try one size, and yeah. after that we ca and I do just 100 graft. We calculate immediately the, the this this two number and the rate of transaction. And after that I change and I increase a little bit. And you are completely right. You you increase uh, globally. You increase the quality of the graph when you increase the size of the punch. Mm -hmm. The consequence is that automatically when you increase the diameter of the punch, you decrease a little bit the number of graphs that you are able to, to get. Mm -hmm. So is there's a balance between both. And the scar size, theoretically. You know. Increase a little bit, but frankly, I'm, I'm really surprised by the diameter of the scar I get. It's, uh, even when I, when I use 9501, mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be. Right. <laughs> yeah, it looks still. Uh, I remember uh, one day I had this observation. I, I use on the same patient, same kind of punch. I don't remember the size, but it was one sharp, and, and the other one was a mm. wow. And the day after, when I saw the when I saw the, the donor, I realized mine was smaller. The, mm. the hole was smaller, so. I wrote Dr. True, Dr. Bob True in New yeah. York, you know, yeah. and I asked him, Bob, isn't it amazing that the, 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 the diameter of the scar uh, seems to be smaller? And I remember he, he, he answered me, Jean, I love you, but don't tell me that with a 09 uh, wow, you will have a, a hole that is smaller. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I stopped to discuss because I, I was not completely sure. Uh -huh. And if you Weeks after, I received uh, um, an email from uh, uh, another doctor, I don't remember, uh -huh. which, telling me exactly the same thing. He said, yeah. it's amazing. You know, I, I, and so now I'm sure. And I, I, I really, I believe I know why. As I said on the first drawing, you need to push. It's an obligation. If you try to enter the skin and, yeah. we, and if you are not pushing, it, it will not work. Right. Because it doesn't, it, in fact, it doesn't work. It doesn't cut except when by pushing the skin is moving that way and by, mm -hmm. by that outer edge gets cut yeah. with that angulation. Even if you are perpendicular, you don't need to be many times we are, we have an access like this, but even if you are making mm -hmm. this perpendicular, if you turn perpendicular, you will not cut. It's like a mass rest. If you, if you imagine a trumpet, mm -hmm. you, you place your mat and very sharp, Mm -hmm. Place you you trumpet on the mask, you you push you don't push you will not cut anything yeah you push you you will you will have make a depression yeah. and you will cut mm -hmm. and by doing that in in reality you 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 stretch I I really believe that this is the reason mm -hmm. by stretching the skin it's like a slastic if you make a slastic you 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 pull the slastic you make a hole with a punch a big punch 
And after you leave this elastic coming back, you it bounces you know, back and it, and it kind of recoils in. It, yeah. Yeah, your hole will, will have a stretch back. So right. this is probably the reason why there is a little difference. That's uh, a, and and this is good because because effectively mm -hmm. the, the size of the star is not important. It's a big subject, you know. This this uh, this uh, this SUE has a big advantage, not giving a linear scar, but it's not also that it's uh, it's perfect. And, yeah, of uh, course, uh, and 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 I mean, I hate when people market it as you know scarless surgery. It's it's totally misleading and false. Yes, frankly misleading, and also it's not almost scarless, but it's sometimes with no scar. I think probably the main problem is not the scar itself. Probably the main problem of the FUE is the receding of the density in the donor, you know? Right. Um, and how safe of a zone are you really harvesting from? I mean, I think that's yeah. one, but also the overall number of grafts over a lifespan that you can get, right? I mean, I think your overall yield with FUT is going to be higher over like a lifespan than with FUE. I mean, do you agree with that? Or Yes, but uh, personally, I'm not really obsessed by, by the limit of the donor. The reason why I say that is that if you do that, first time it will be perfect. You will take on the safe donor area and it will be perfect. But if you have to continue and to and because the patient is still... Yeah. And if you're still continuing to, to extract on that area, and, and probably because you will, you will leave a fringe, a mm -hmm. nice fringe, one or two centimeters, that you will not touch. You will, you will leave it because you are afraid of going there. Yeah. You will have a wonderful thing with here, less density, because, because you are not able to come back to the real, original density. And here, less density also because you, 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 you went twice or three times there, and you decrease the density by, I don't know, 30, 40 percent globally. Mm -hmm. And here you have this wonderful fringe with an, an original density. And this is, I believe, really believe the main problem who are coming, cut, cutting the hair very short. There is no solution for that. The only solution is to go there and to remove also the fringe. So, yes. so and it doesn't, for me, it doesn't really matter Yes, it's, it's obvious that if the, the patient is 20 years old, you have to be careful. But if the patient is, is older, if you have a, a little dog, you, you can go sometimes. I'm really going near the recipient area and I'm just doing taking a hair from here and placing one yeah, centimeter. Right next door. Next door, yeah. Next door. Yeah. And I'm, I try not to leave a fringe. And if I leave a fringe, I try to, to fade, you know, to decrease. This is the main problem with the FUE and that we didn't have with the FUT, is this the modification of, of, the, of the density of the... Of the it's donor. interesting. And then, Dr. Vore, I had a question. Uh, I mean, I think my only criticism of the WA currently, the way it is, is the weight of it, just because over time, you know, you really, you start to feel like that pressure in your hand just because you're holding this thing, you know, for a long period of time. Any chance that the weight can be reduced or if in the new system, mm -hmm. have you considered that? I don't know if like different metals or something to try to bring down the overall weight. Yes, the next model will be half, half weight. Uh, it's all aluminum. First, we had two models also, one in... Um, but this, the one I, you have now is aluminium, but the weight is because uh, the hand piece is very, very uh, heavy. Yeah. And, uh, and there is a big motor. Now we have a battery, but we have a motor that is smaller and there is almost no, no hand piece. So I said the half, the half weight, but probably something like that. It's all aluminium. We, we first did two model, one aluminium, one stainless steel, but uh, I will probably make only aluminium, and uh, mm -hmm. yes, it will be it will be lighter. That's great. And also with no wire, so this is also something that I really appreciate. That's I use great. it for almost uh, four or five months. It's all prototype, but I I really love it. I just had two cases mm -hmm. where I came back to the other uh, the other model. 
uh, one with uh, really weak tissue. Yeah. I try, 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 and I finally decided to come back to the to the traditional system, and it was better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the second time also, but on, on two, in four months, I would say that it's even increased the quality, it even increase, it even decreased the, the rate of transaction. And what's the plan to market with uh, with that new device? Uh, when are you thinking? The goal it was and is, is still uh, the next meeting in uh, Lisbon, but you know, with the COVID, uh, yeah. it's horrible. Everywhere around the world, we we have, uh, there's a problem with, with everything, but especially with electronic parts. Yeah, and unfortunately, inside my device, I have a big part of electronic, and uh, we we made we made also uh, a new application. I will have also I have a big project of having including uh, this application a system for the quality control. Yeah. Uh, also, mm. I made an intranet that would be available for young doctor. And it will be also a part of that. I have many projects around the device. Yeah, it's great. But for the device itself, we are waiting. I hope I made a big comment to have uh, to have some part, and I would receive it in August. I mm. pray for that. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm not the only one. You know, it's every everywhere around the world. It's so yeah, amazing. major major delays. Yeah, I've heard especially yeah with construction now that people are buying all these homes in the suburbs, at least around here. The construction costs are extremely high because of parts I, being burned and you know wood even being expensive. So it's it's tough for everyone. I wanted to also ask you about the recipient area because I I know that you've made some devices for that kind of manual ones where you load up the graphs and implanters that can hold like six, seven graphs. But what about like a more automated system maybe that makes slits w that's a little bit more electronic, I was thinking, where you can control, you know, something a little bit faster where you can make all the slits at once instead of just kind of manually pushing with your hand, almost like we, we were doing with the donor area, you know, with the manual. Now I'm going in and making all these slits, but perhaps there's something that can be made that's a little bit automatic where maybe just pressing a button or you know saying every two seconds or every three seconds release a little kind of slit you know and create that have you thought of anything like that or or anything yeah. automated for the recipient area i didn't really search on that first because i spent all my time on the first device i have also another device but it's a little, it's a little bit secret so I don't want to speak about the second one, but okay. uh, about uh, about that one. Aftas is having uh, probably they have pattern on it, and I I know that also Korean was doing something like that with uh, articulate robot, and I would say that probably it's a very very good idea, and probably making the incision with a robot would be even better than what we we do not uh, by, by hand because we. We don't have the capacity. Our brain is not able, like right. a robot, to have a perfect to map it system. out. To map out the yes, numbers. Map, and, and if you say, okay, I would, I would, I would need to have that kind of density there uh, on that area and another, and to have in your head and, and make a calculation in your head. Very and difficult. we can make an estimation. And this is what we do, especially when we work for many, many, many years. Finally, we don't have to calculate. We, we see the situation and we know. We, know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we, we apprehend the situation. But a robot could do, do that better uh, in terms of, also of angulation. Right. In terms also, this is, this is something that almost nobody speaks about. And it's, for me, crucial. What is the consequence of a transaction in the recipient area. You mean we, with, with the existing hairs when you transect yeah. into an existing hair? When, when we do incision in the middle of the yeah. hair, probably right. we are doing Injuring. a huge yeah. amount of transaction inside. Yeah. What is the consequence? Mm. I'm surprised that, and I would like to do the study, I'm surprised that nobody does it because it's possible that somebody does, but I, do, I, don't, I d didn't see that. Right. Because if it's the case, if, if, if by transecting, we could induce a miniaturization. Probably. Sure. I believe that we induce a miniaturization. 
it's very frequent to see after hair transplant surgery that you have more hair miniaturized, mm. or even the hair that you that you transplant could be miniaturized. Probably we have that kind of consequence. And so having a system made by a robot should be very good. But if you need to buy just the Artas just for that, I think it's a little bit expensive. Yeah. I don't know. I think I most know. people who use the artist, as far as I know, they're mainly using it still primarily for, for donor, not so much for recipient because of the speed. I think it's just still very slow. So it can maybe map things out, but then ultimately to wait for it to make all of the slits, it's just like you're waiting forever. I think a lot of them use uh, it. I, it's true. I had also some commentary because I thought it was very interesting. And I asked some people having the artas and they told me, oh, no, I, I don't use it. So I, I don't have any details about it. Well, I was thinking I just, some kind of virtual reality kind of addition where it's not like necessarily a massive robot that takes up an entire room, but, you know, they have like these Oculus headsets and that sort of thing. So maybe something like that, that helps you map out and say, okay, I, um, I was able to get 1200 graphs, or this is what the patient was willing to pay for. We know the general area that we need to work, but what's the perfect distribution of those 1200 graphs and almost like illuminates the path you know and then you just have to go and match the angulation and all of that i remember when i was i was uh, trained by dr cole i had this idea with a laser i even bought some little you know the laser that you use for pointing uh-huh. and uh, it was the idea but the problem is that when you use the laser and, and the idea was to have this point and it works but trying to get this point Many times you, you, you pass through the, the, the laser, so it disappears. Uh, so I'm not sure it's difficult to find. Yeah. I don't have all the details, but I, I remember also that there is some STEM system. It's a good idea, you know, just to, if, especially now that we are shaving the wall, the wall uh, recipient area, it mm-hmm. would be good to stamp. And by stamping, you can have different kind of density. Mm. But when again, when when you have a, when you know the way to do that, it's not really a big big huge problem. Well, this was great, and I really look forward to trying all of your new technology out. It's been a, a great, uh, awesome addition to to my practice, and you know I, I make a lot of YouTube videos nowadays, and and uh, you know I I'm always kind of talking about the why and. And then, so I'm excited to hear this. What I try to do now also is a new thing is I will, I will probably have, not probably, I will have a special punch for beard because beard is different uh, than, than, uh, than scalp hair. We made a, a punch that is uh, sharper, much sharper, still flat, but most, most sharper. Mm. I will have probably this punch with the, with the window. I'm not completely sure but it's possible that i would switch for that so probably we will have different kind of punch uh, i will i will have also i study a lot the influence of the different t's uh, the number of t's the size of the t's yes there is there's lots so of many. variables to work with uh, yeah 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 and, and and also even the shape of the funnel and because again, I'm obsessed with this uh, rate of transaction, not rate of transaction, the fact that we still have transaction. Right, uh, right. I, I think we can get it down. Is to, my dream is to find uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Cole as a punch that is, uh, the name is zero, zero T transaction, like it's possible. No, it's, it's still not. It doesn't matter what you call it. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not because you call it that it, it's, <laughs> it's, it works that way, but uh, it's really a mystery. And I would like to understand. This is this yeah. is my next challenge. Understand why we still have. Uh, I have a little idea of that, but I'm not completely sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I would really want to study that and to understand. I have to find the the way to to study it more closely. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I need to find a way to to see what, what happens inside and to understand why why it happens that way. But it's it's really 
it's really fascinated, you know, it's really something, and this is something I, I love, you know, it's a, yeah, like a no, challenge. Of every, no, it's, it's every, day, it's a every day is a challenge. Uh, this morning at six o'clock in the morning, I was preparing some punch, you know, and I, and I made the description number one. Normally right. I had two or three different punch to test. Yeah. I don't want also to have, my patient is not, is not there to, to take a test, you know, so I, right, right. I see that one is not the best. You quickly change over, yeah. Uh, I, I quickly change, but if it's in the middle, if it's around between 2% to 10%, I accept it because I don't know if it's, if it's in regard of the punch of what I change in the punch or in regard of all the other factor. Yeah. So, then, then, then it's difficult to study. Listen, nothing, nothing, is, nothing is perfect in this world, uh, but all we can <laughs> do is, is try to improve and better ourselves and our work, you know, and I think you've been doing that for, for decades. Um, so I aspire. But this is also something I, I love is because I have, I have really many, many doctors around the world that use my system. Yeah. And, and many of the best in the world are using my system. So I have this commentary, oh my God, it's so good. I'm so happy with your system and I'm doing really a good job. I, I'm feeling good, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, yeah. to save. To save. I said when I will pass away, they will write, uh, he saved million millions hair. <laughs> not only, it's not only for my patient, but it's also... For the well, because you impact so many like patients. I mean, because all these doctors, like myself, using your system, and all of our patients are benefiting from that. So the um, the benefit is just is tremendous um, to to a lot of people. Yeah, this is this is something that I I like. It's nice yeah. to, to to think about it, and it's funny because it was really not my goal in the beginning. It was the beginning was just to solve my problem, you know, to yeah. try to. to Better. Yeah, I mean, I think all inventions, you know, they start with like kind of addressing some some problem and, and finding solutions. So, uh, you know, so thank you again for all the work that you're doing uh, that that helps. Yeah, welcome. Out. Yeah, welcome. we do appreciate it, and and I hope to visit you one day too. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't know when my next uh, trip to Europe will be, but uh, hopefully within the next you know few years. And uh, I'd love to stop by and and see uh, your clinic. Good. All right, Dr. Broy, so good afternoon.